guys, my name is Russian Badger, and finally I get an opportunity to talk about Endgame. Oh my god, I've just been so busy with school and stuff, and other stuff, and what, watching documentaries about moonshine in Uganda, and how you go blind from bananas. I know it, it sounds pretty bananas, and I feel bad about it, because it's like, genuinely at its core, Badger, that is literally talking about people that are going blind from drinking moonshine. And then all I think about is... From bananas. That is bananas. <laughs> it feels very insensitive. However, I finally have an opportunity to talk about Endgame. And it's not an opportunity like I did with the Capture the Flag video where it's just a short synopsis of what I think about an average game of Capture the Flag. It's something that I can really elaborate on. So, the first thing that I usually like to do in a Capture the Flag game is find the enemy team's spawn and shut it down. It... You want to be a rock in the edge of their spawn, and it's... I really feel as if that a lot of what Capture the Flag is, is just dividing yourself into two different categories. Are you gonna... No, actually, <clears throat> I would say three categories, okay? This is what I would say. There's one. Number one is what I usually do. I usually go to the enemy spawn and try to shut it down like a huge catfish, and I know it's... Just, it's kind of slimy, but it works very effectively a lot of the time. You'll see in this video, it didn't work as successfully as I thought it would be. However, it was successful enough for us to win the game. Now, there's a few different components to this whole tactic of I'm going to sit in the enemy spawn with a tank and disrupt everything that I can. Now, you'll get a, a lot of kills, obviously. However, it's more so about creating enough of a distraction that they will point their weapons and their general focus and sense of direction towards you instead of the flag. That is such a golden point in terms of winning the game and capture the flag. If you can get the majority of the enemy team, or at least half of the enemy team, especially in terms of 48 to 64 players, if you can just be like, hey bro, bro cookie, over here, look at me. The flag? Nobody cares about the flag. It's not even important. That's, what is this, capture the flag or something? Is that the game mode? Don't, don't even look at it. Don't, don't stop looking at the flag, man. And yes, you'll see that I clean up a few kills here. But it's, it's so much about just distracting the enemy from looking at their own flag. If you can enable an environment for your teammates to pick up the flag in a sort of carefree and safe... I don't know exactly how I want to say this. Because, sure, you can distract... Like, it can never be perfect. As in, you can distract all of the enemy team. However, your teammates that pick up flags are still gonna, well, I guess I hit a mine. Well, I guess I blew up my motorcycle by crashing it into a, a gigantic Blank. barrier that is clearly not destructible. So your teammates are still gonna make mistakes, Blank. even when you give them the perfect environment to pick up the flag. However, I think it definitely helps, okay? Just in general, you shutting down the enemy spawn does help. However much catfishery you think it may be, however slimy and sort of unethical you may think it is, it works very, very well. It didn't work perfectly in this match, but I think I, I decided to showcase this match because it showed a lot of the things that I did wrong and it showed... Now, I did use the spaz for a period of time. However, this was not the class that was recommended by one of you guys. One of you guys recommended a class that was centered around the P90, which I switched to, but I accidentally started out with the spaz. I only get a few kills with it. The majority of this game is with a class that you guys recommended, which is the P90 with a suppressor. And that's another thing that I want to touch on after I talk about sort of the three distinct roles that you can play in a capture the flag game. So, <clears throat> you're either the catfish that sits in the enemy spawn, you're the catfish that sits in your own spawn and just puts down mines and sits on a bipod or a sniper rifle or C4 and waits for the enemy to come to try to get the flag and get blown to smithereens. Just painting the carpet red, or the grass, or the vegetation, whatever it may be on the ground at that specific point in time. I don't know if there's any kind of, like, nice Ukrainian rugs around here that you could stain blood on. But, you're either the guy that sits in the enemy team spawn, the guy that sits in his own spawn, or the guy that tries to get the flag. And I like to think that the first two are equally as slimy, but the third guy... He dies. So often, he should be considered some sort of Valiant Warrior. Because you're going to be dying so often. And, okay, I get like a second headshot here with this pass. But it's not something that... It's not a big deal. The majority of the game is still P90, which you guys requested. But this is something else that I would like to talk about. I think 
genuinely that on a lot of the end game maps, and that's just why did you not aim down side badger? What Leg what are you rock. doing? And I, I get Leg like blindsided here and dying. But I like to think that suppressors are extremely important, especially on maps that offer 64, I want to say 48 plus, especially 64 players. Because I don't know if you guys notice this, but I definitely notice this quite frequently is that as soon as you start firing, and this is especially prevalent with the spas, as soon as you start firing, there's, think about it, there's twice as many players on a map with six, I know that's very, very basic math, and you're thinking to yourself, what the, why would you tell me that? Okay, so, 64 players, obviously twice 32 men, so it's twice as many guys that are likely to be in that proximity as soon as you fire your slug or you fire your unsuppressed weapon, and it is such a hassle. It is such a hassle. However, when you fire your suppressed weapon, not only do you make less noise, but you don't show up on the radar, which is so much more important. And it's it's invaluable. I can't even tell you how valuable it is, because just not being seen or not attracting attention and being able to silently take out enemies one by one by one. Now granted, it's not completely silent. I mean, obviously people can hear you and I can distinctly tell Oh wait, that is a P90, or that's a, an LMG, or something like that. But it's much more difficult to navigate towards an enemy that you don't know where he is. Because of the radar. Because the radar, so many guys just glue their eyes to the radar, and just, Oh, I can't see anybody on the radar, must be safe. And that's exactly the types of, that's exactly the types of people that get shot in the face so frequently. Like, that's the people that I prey upon. And you'll notice that the P90 definitely has some great hip fire. However, you will also take note that and this was just weird i was below half health and i was killing a lot of the enemy team and then this guy with his he was just spraying around and i got shot from two different directions that was just i don't even know what's going on there so i decided to take sort of a defensive route well i guess there's more than one i guess technically there would be five rolls right so you can either, and this infuriated me because there are two guys staring directly at the guy at the enemy that just shot me in the face, but luckily I get revived and I live to see another day. But I guess from a technical standpoint, you could probably argue that there are tons of different roles, but I like to think that I would narrow it down to five. I know I just previously said three, but I'd probably say five. So you got the guy that camps in his own spawn, you got the guy that camps the enemy team spawn, you got the guy that defends his own spawn, and you got the guy that defends or sort of, I don't know how I would word that. Let's see. I guess sort of the people that are sitting in their own spawn are also defending, but it's essentially, are you sitting in your own spawn, sitting in the enemy spawn, or are you getting the flag? I think that's what it boils down to, so I, I kill, still can't turn. And this guy, I thought he was so randy, so, did, so dandy that he could just jump out and hit me with his semi-automatic sniper, and that usually will work. I have noticed that the QBB, is it QB 98? can't remember. The... Semi-auto snipers, some of them are actually good in 1v1 situations if you aim down sight quickly enough. And you guys have probably seen me with the M417 and the... I haven't used the SKS before in a video, I don't think. But those things are very, very lethal. If you're accurate, you aim down sight, and you have the right attachments. But I just can't tell you how invaluable the suppressor is going to be in Endgame. Now, I would also like to talk about the specific maps. I think I'll talk about them in depth individually but in in general i would say that okay so this one is operation riverside which is essentially everybody goes to this left hand side from my perspective it's the left hand side anybody that goes on the right hand side is asking to get blown up by a tank eaten up by mines or blown up by c4 Play. basically and you'll notice that everybody on the American team will camp in those where I've been frolicking about for the longest time. That's where the majority of the American team lurks, just around their spawn. They just sit around there because they have enough cover that they can conceal themselves and also enough distance or a close enough distance that they can easily shoot anybody that's going for the flag. And here I decided to defend my own spawn by giving you a sandwich, dog. And that's, that's something that I like to do periodically. If I notice that my spawn is being... Oh lord, there's so many guys in my spawn just sitting there shooting anybody that tries to return the flag or capture the flag for our team. I will usually drop back in a more defensive position. I guess it's more of an aggressive defensive position, but I'll drop back and be like, Hey yo dog, get out of my spawn. I don't appreciate I don't appreciate that right there, man. So I will easily do that. And that really frees up a lot of space. And that's a definitely a good tactic if you can see that right in front of you. I'm not talking about the tactic of running your motorcycle as a cloth monster into a 
yellow recycling or dumpster bin, but having your flag carrier, or if you capture the enemy flag, but the enemy has your flag, sitting in a tank or some sort of armored vehicle is always, always very, very valuable flag to you. So, okay. Run. Operation Riverside, essentially everybody takes his side. American team lurks in these rocks, the Russian team lurks around their rocks, and they all look at flags, right? I guess that can kind of be said for a lot of different maps, but okay. Flag and then team. Kaisar Railroad is mines everywhere. Now, this is how I would describe it. Mines are everywhere in all these CTF maps, but especially Kaisar Railroad. It seems like they are just... Every little nook and cranny that you think the mine is not going to just blow you in half, it blows you in half. And it's very, very annoying. But, it's just more lurking. These though, okay, I want to say about Kaisar Railroad, like you guys saw in the Capture the Flag video, it is probably the most fun thing to lurk in spawns. These spawns, you can't really get away with it because a lot of them are kind of randomized. But you'll notice some of the spawns, I think Kaisar, I, th I would say Kaisar and... S is it Sabalane or Sabalon pipeline? And that's that's a double kill right there. I want to say that those spawns are very, very easy to trap. Like, you can straight up fire rockets at somebody's feet before they even have a chance to move. And that's, I think that's one opportunity where I think that, you know, spawn protection is actually justified. So, guys, our railroads, pretty much everybody goes up the middle or through these flank routes, but it doesn't it doesn't matter which route you take, you're blowing you're getting blown up by a mine regardless if you're staying on a motorcycle, alright? And then let's see, Nemandan Flats, especially on Rush, is it should be renamed Everybody Lurk Behind a Rock and Wait to Get Shot in the Face with a Sniper Rifle or an AN94. I'll show you guys a video on Friday or let's say Friday or the weekend or sometime next week. I will show you what Nevendon Flats is. Or Nabandan. I don't know how. You, Lieutenant Dan. I don't know what you want to call it, but Nevandan Flats on Rush is literally let's all hide behind a rock and wait in line to get sniped in the face with an AN94 or a sniper rifle. That is literally exactly what it is. And right here, look, I was looking for. Okay, so I'm pretty well. I, there comes a point where I get out of ammo and I think I'm so cool because I can pick up another gun. Now look what I do. Okay, of all the guns that I could pick up, look, bro, Chacho. Oh, that's a suppressed LSAT with an ACOG. That is. Vitrauri. That is so terrible. That's like, oh, of all the guns that you could pick up, that's just gross. That's. Oh, okay. So, Kaiser Railroad is everybody takes a different route, but everybody gets blown up by AT mines. Nevin Don Flats is everybody hide behind a rock, and everybody. Everybody get destroyed by the tank that's always sitting in the spawn for some reason and this MP443 is very very dandy and if you want to maintain that complete stealth I like the MP443 suppressed. I guess the G18 suppressed and everything else works better but I, I, I find personally that I think the MP443 suits me well despite the fact that it aren't, if I'm not mistaken, the M9, the MP443 and one other... What's the other one? They're all like replicas of each other. The G17, they're all pretty well the same in terms of their statistics. It's just... And this recon came and got revenge. I got sniped in the face. But, okay. Operation Riverside, you guys have already been over where everybody hugs this left side and lurks in the rocks of their spawn. Sabalon Pipeline? I I don't know why. You guys saw in the intro, I noticed so many glitches on this map. And I, have, I, I don't understand why, specifically. It's just... Everyone in the middle of the snow, nobody has white camo, so everybody sits out like a... S everybody in the, on that map, because there's no white camo, sticks out like a sore thumb. And it's weird to play on. It's really weird. Because you are you notice everybody running around, and you just think to yourself, Why are you wearing that color of camouflage? That makes no, no rational sense whatsoever. But, I will talk to you guys more about Endgame and the Nebin, Nebin Dan, Lieutenant Dan Flats, or the Let's All Hide Behind a Rock map sometime in the near future where I will discuss Endgame a little bit further, okay? So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. I'm sorry about the slight hiatus or the slight gap in videos, but I was sort of busy learning about moonshine and bananas and blindness. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later! Hostile sniper in your AO. Over.
real shit and you get skeeted on. Thank you, you the shit girl, you get skeeted on. Walking on your 